Yo, yo, welcome back. Today, we are diving into the first portion of the TX side of the Portapec H4M or H2. Uh, I am running the nightly of 2025-04-07, so about a month old now. Uh, well, a little over a month old, but everything's working as it should. So, if you don't know what APRS is, you can go back... Uh, about a year ish now, and look at the APRS or X or yeah, our X side of things on the Portapec H2 that I did, and it's kind of like what I started my journey in a lot of this. Uh, pretty much APRS is a uh, geolocation slash text messaging service that you can use with uh, a radio. You know whether that's an HT like this Yaesu FT3DR. Um, or we're going to also show you on the Android running the uh, KV4PHT. Diving into APRS, uh, we're going to go over here to the H4M. So ignore the Android for now. Let's get him out of the way. And then we're also going to ignore the H2. Get him out of the way. And then we're going to go over here to the H4M. We can go to the transmit area. And under APRS, the first one there. Now, to use APRS legally, you do need a call sign. So you do need to be a technician, general, or more uh, with a ham radio license. Whenever I get into this, I'm going to go over here to source. Now, the source is going to be your call sign. So we're going to just kind of tap through here. And I'm just going to fast forward through this. So you're, in, you're, you're going to enter your call sign uh, there under the source. Now, SSID and SSID, those two right here and here. Uh, I'm going to leave those at zero. Uh, we can go to the wiki documentation here on the Portapack Mayhem GitHub area. And this will be under the documentation part. So if you're new to all of this, um, all the links for any of this stuff will be in the description below. How to get there and kind of what it is. But if we go over here, we can see its source. We, and you, you can read through all this, right, if you want to. Uh, I'm not going to read through all of it. We will discuss the SSID. Uh, so right here, after we're done with our source area, it says the next step is to do the SSID and select the numeric number 0 through 15. The most common SSID value for a port pack is 0. So we're going to leave 0 and 0 for the um, source and the destination. Now the destination, that can be somebody else's call sign that you are trying to reach out to. Uh, in my case, since this is going to be very generic and I'm going to do my best to stay in the vicinity of my garage, which is why I'm using these kind of really small, low powered antennas here. Um, you know, like this one right here, this is a Diamond SRH805S. And then this other guy on the H4M is a GRA SCH32. And then this guy over here on the H2 is just some kind of generic little mini rubber ducky that I got from Amazon. So. Again, uh, antenna list will be in the description below. Some will be affiliate links. And then of course we have right here the uh, Comet BNC W100RX, uh, which I love that antenna, but for today's purposes, we will be using low powered antennas. For the destination, I'm just gonna put in CQ, as if I'm calling CQ. And then our input field right there, that is gonna be your message that you're trying to send. So for my case, I'm just gonna go and set that. And I think I will do L and S, like and subscribe, okay? Now, after that, our frequency. So the set frequency for APRS in the US is 144.3900. You can check on the H, uh, we'll go over here on the H2, for instance. We can look over here under NA right here. And if we scroll over, then we can select your country. So NZ for New Zealand, we have Japan, the Philippines, Europe, Thailand, Australia, uh, Britain, and then the ISS also has APRS on it as well, the International Space Station. So there's that one. Uh, I believe I did a short maybe on receiving APRS uh, from the ISS. I can't remember. I know I wanted to, so maybe if I didn't, then I will go back and look, and then I will do one. Uh, and then yada, yada, yada. So again, uh, I'm, in, I'm in North America, so I'm going to leave mine set to the 144.3900. And since I'm so close right now, I'm going to leave my gain to zero and then my LNA, MIV, GA, just the standard 32. So we can give these guys a little bit of space. So just to be on the safe side, both of these have the Clifford Heath 
uh, boards in them. This has the older 2023 board, I believe, uh, that is still the micro USB uh, version. And then this one has the new 2025 R10 Plus board in it as so. Um, I should be okay to transmit this close with those. So if you're not if you're not sure, just give yourself about three to five feet of distance and use a low powered antenna with your gain off. That way you don't go and fry any of your stuff. Okay. Uh, once we're there, we can go ahead and uh, we're have a frequency down there like we discussed to the 144.3900. My um, my amp is zero. My gain is 35, and then my step portion there is at the five kilohertz range. Now if I go to start. You can see automatically that over here on the H2, we received that, single, that signal of L and S. And you can see that there's my call sign and I'm calling CQ and then my message. So simple enough, that's what APRS is. Now, if we go over here to the KV4PHT and we can then go to APRS chat. These are kind of the past test ones that I was doing earlier uh, when I was setting all this up is what you're seeing here. But if I go to my port back again and I go do this, go okay, we're gonna hit start. And then there you can see that we have a raw feed coming in from KG, KJ7VUB calling CQ and then the L and S for like and subscribe. If you are interested in the KB4PHT, I did a giveaway a few months ago and I also did a review on this little guy. And that brings us to today's sponsor, PCBWay. So PCBWay uh, is an awesome PCB company and I use them to uh, print out a few of these. I did five and I kept one for myself. The other four I gave away. Um, and I might do a second uh, giveaway on these uh, in the coming months. So if you are interested in the K4PHT, let me know. Um, but this is some amazing products, what kind of what PCBWay can do for you guys. You can see how clean all that looks. And they did the entire board minus the antenna. Uh, they even sent me the little USB-C to USB-C adapters. It also has a third USB-C portion right there for charging. So one to the phone, one to the KB4PHT, one for charging. And simple flashing uh, was done on a computer. And then the upgrades were actually done on the Android phone. Uh, these are Android only because iOS does not allow you to plug in external stuff yet. If you are interested in any of this kind of stuff, go check out PCB Way for some really awesome printing and some really cool projects like this right here, the KB4PHT. Thanks PCB Way for this amazing project and your support, I greatly appreciate it. And back to the video here now, if I go to the KB4PHT and I decide to type in a new message, so let's just go to like and sub, so if this all works as it should, I should be able to go and hit transmit over here on the KB4PH2 on the <laughs> on the KB4PHT on the Android phone here, and then we should see it pop up. Hopefully, fingers crossed, over here on the H2. So let's go ahead and hit send, and let's see what happens. Like and sub. Now we can see that we are trying to receive something over here, and I don't know why we didn't get to see it. Uh, let's see here. Let's try that again. So I heard it briefly over here. Uh, and so APR, APRS has a very distinct uh, audio tone. It sounds like the beginning of an old school dial-up tone. So it's got that and then it kind of stops. That is the transmission portion of APRS. So if you want to hear it, uh, let's go to this radio right here. We're going to go to the good old FT3DR, and then I'm gonna go to, and I'm gonna jack this volume up. So hopefully this shouldn't take too long for us to get a signal or something. And I'm gonna hold this up to the microphone right here. If I go test again, let's see here. Oh, hope you heard that. So that was not me, that was another one actually coming in. Uh, this one will be me. So let's go ahead and go down and then send. So that was me, my transmission. Uh, so that is what APRS sounds like. If you did not know that. Now, uh, let's figure out though why we're not able to receive because I am curious to know why we are not receiving from those. So let's try turning up our LNA and our VJ like we discussed earlier. Let's go to 36 on this one and let's keep this guy over here at 32. And then we'll do the same thing on the H. 236 and then let me double check a few things on the kb4 pht 
And let's see here. We're gonna go to APRS chat. We're gonna go to settings here. Uh, let's go. We're on narrow band. Let's go. Let's keep that narrow. Let's hit done. And then let's go ahead and hit test again. If I can spell test again. And let's hit send. There we go. All right. So we got one over here on the H4M. Uh, and I don't know why we did not get one on the H2. No, nope. let's just try G. There we go. So it could be a distance thing. Who knows, right? Uh, this little guy I'm running is a Diamond SRH805S antenna on that guy. That's pretty much the gist of APRS. And again, we can just go to the APRS TX side over here on the transmit. And we're going to APRS TX. And again, to get in there, you're going to enter your source, your call sign. Uh, your destination. So if you are trying to reach out to somebody else via their call sign, that's where that's going to go. If you're in the U.S., just leave both your SSIDs to zero. And then your info is going to be your message. And then make sure that you're on the appropriate frequency. And then just hit start. And that is pretty much it. So one more time on APRS, KJ7VUB is going to be my source. My destination is calling, I'm calling CQ. And I'm going to say thank you for watching this video and please like and subscribe and we're gonna hit start and there you can see over here on the h2 that we have received my message of saying thanks i appreciate your time thank you all for uh watching do not forget to like subscribe and do all that fun stuff and i will see you guys in the next video